I was out on one of my iconic 3am night walks when I heard the strange chittering of incoherent phrases and melodies. Across the road I saw three strange figures cloaked in shadow. My mind was soon overwhelmed by the eldritch passages entering my brain, and I soon passed out on the concrete. When I awoke, I found myself in a dusty and dank factory. Gazing around the room, I realized why I was there, and immediately accepted my new fate as a lunch leader. Er, no, wait. A lunchy worker. I'm uncertain of how much time passed between my unconscious body being dragged here and me waking up, but I was certain that I was starving, and since I could care less about getting fired, I didn't wait until my lunch break, and got straight to creating one serving of lunchy. Hitting the shiny red button, the machine whirred to life and spat out a stack of mystery meat into the plastic vessel. Next ingredient, non-processed cheese. But then the machine malfunctioned, and instead of a delicious stack of real unprocessed cheese, I received nothing, and the machine turned to manual mode. With my trusty flashlight in hand, I began exploring the foul factory. I recklessly threw myself into vats of cheese until finding a delicious stack of real unprocessed cheese. With a disgusting squish, I shot the real unprocessed cheese out of the vat like a basketball and went to place it in the unholy receptacle. Non-processed cheese accepted. Next item on the list was not prime, but a peak sports drink. I licked my lips in anticipation of that mouth-watering purple sludge and trudged deeper into the factory. I found crates of smaller bottles of peak, one of which descended from the top shelf scaring the crap out of me because it made a large metallic pipe sound. Keep this in mind for later. But those were mere chump change compared to the almighty big bottle. This wouldn't be an easy task, though. I heard the boisterous footsteps and slurping of a foul beast, a living bottle of peak attempting to protect its child. Using my last few remaining brain cells, I resourcefully used the worthless pallets of Mini Prime to elevate myself to the peak. You get it? Peak? Be because it's, a, it's, it's at the top, and they've got the peak at the top, and they've got the For those who don't understand, Peak is the name of the sports drink, and peak is also the word for the top of something. Now go back and watch the video again so you can enjoy the pun. And while you're at it, go ahead and like and subscribe down below. But it wasn't enough, I would need a few more crates. After failing a puzzle designed for children for a few minutes, I put the last remaining brain cell to work and put the pallets a little over to the right. But then, I dropped one. Expertly avoiding the beast, and by that I mean running away like a scaredy cat, I returned the crate to its rightful spot. I then realized I would need one more crate, the one we saw back in the other room. I stealthily sprinted back and slid under the door to retrieve the final crate. I soon found out this crate had a pipe falling sound effect tied to it, and any little collision would cause it to play at full volume. And if I had to listen to this, then so do you. I placed the final cube of primelets beneath me and grabbed the big bottle. The light bulb shorted and shattered at that exact moment. I claimed my prize by throwing it over my shoulder and sprinted to the gate without looking back, sealing the beast in its wretched chamber. I had no time to relax, however. In the distance, I saw the cruel visage of a living lunchy box, but when I approached it, in the blink of an eye, it disappeared. I wasted no time and dropped the peak into the tray. As I saw a cool blue light illuminating the door I left as soon as I came, this was my final destination. What happened here was not for the faint of heart, so if you still think Mr. Beast is a good person, don't watch any further. Oh, wait, hold on, wait, never, wait, hold on, never mind, he's already ruined that for himself. Open before me is a long corridor, with a mannequin who appears to have overdosed on feastable- <coughs> I mean treatables, and a ringing phone. I attempted to pick it up, and as I reached my hand out, I felt a mind-shattering pain seize through my head, and the phone stopped ringing. Was it just in my imagination? Among the pile of treatables was a keycard, which I then promptly used on the door. 
Then, before I could even react, a giant treatables <laughs> bar ran towards me. With my quick thinking and flight or fight reaction time, I chose to chicken out, slamming the door and hopping on the table like a coward. I sat frozen in fear for a short while before deciding to press onwards. I entered the office space and the treatables bar was nowhere to be seen. I meandered around before finding a sticky note with a code written on it, in parallel, a locked door. I entered the code and opened the door to unveil a trashed corridor of chairs and desks. I crawled under the wreckage and was met with another ringing phone. This time I ignored because I didn't want my head to go owie again. As I turned the corner, I heard loud footsteps and spotted the living treatables bar. Before giving it a chance to tackle me, I turned around and hid, because that's worked every other time so far. And I get terrified when I see inanimate objects moving. I waited with bated breath for it to leave. In a few moments, I turned the corner once more to see that it was not a living bar, but a deranged Mr. Beast inside a mascot outfit. Truly disgusting, immoral, despicable, vile, ugly, Disgusting, scary, Terry, Barry, Perry. Upon realizing this, I turned tail to think about what I had just witnessed. Knowing I couldn't waste any more time, I charged out into the open and sprinted as fast as I could past the evil Mr. Beast. Eventually, after running around the cubicles, I found another card. This time, it was the executive card, the highest ranking card in all of the Lunchy Factory. I could get anywhere I desired. Took it with me and tried to flee the room, but Mr. Beast was waiting. I parkoured across the tables, then hid in a cubicle. Now, either he has short-term memory loss, or he can't see out of that costume very well, because he immediately lost interest in me. Which is especially amazing, because I jumped over and over again, making a ton of noise, trying to escape the small corner I got myself stuck in. Darn you, armchairs. You are comfy, but annoying. After a few more pitiful attempts, I was able to free myself from the armchairs. I charged past him and made my way into the wrecked corridor, and held my breath as his stomping began to fade into the distance. I stumbled around for a bit and got distracted by a bathroom, which at this point I needed to change my soiled pants, but after realizing it was locked from the inside, I gave up. Picking the card back up from the dirty, filthy, disgusting floor, I went over and used it on the executive office door. Now an even hotter bar than that will be the treatables bar I get as my reward. And there it was, the giant treatables bar, the last piece of the puzzle missing for a balanced lunch. The mannequin then started clapping at me. I wasn't sure whether to feel threatened or praised. Either way, I'll still be going to therapy after this whole thing is done. Not because I was scared of the mannequin, but what the mannequin meant, the ramifications of such a being. It was alive, and we saw one earlier, one that looked just like it, and there it was, lying on the cold floor surrounded by treatables bars. Is it possible for a mannequin to die? Do mannequins go to heaven? Do mannequins have souls to begin with? Will they be met with an unending void upon death? If humans were made in the image of God, and mannequins in the image of humans, was God made in the image of... No, I dare not ask. Okay, back to the stupid lunchy game, let's go. Entering the large room for the final time, I looked around cautiously, hoping that I wouldn't find the giant living lunchy box. Fortunately, I saw no such thing. Excitedly, I ran up the stairs and placed the treatables bar in its final place of rest. Now that the ritual has been complete, the machine spoke out to me again. Treatables accepted. Lunchy meal complete. Enjoy your meal packed full of nutrients, and be sure to tell all your friends, brought to you by your favorite creator. <laughs> Felt the piercing pain of my stomach growling, and hurriedly picked up the lunchy box. All of my blood, sweat, and tears to be defined as 230 calories. Did you know that one serving of lunchly, I, I mean, lunchy, contains over 20% of the recommended daily salt intake? Don't worry, sodium is an electrolyte, and electrolytes are good for you. It's got the stuff that plants crave. Truly a divine meal. I thank the three dark gods for creating such a substance. And now, it is in my hands. And now, it is time for me to partake in this divine feast. Oh, the stinking miasma of the meat. And the odor of the real, unprocessed cheese filled my lungs, and I began to devour it, savoring every morsel. But before I could get any further into the meal, something felt... wrong. My vision began to blur, and I heard a ringing noise in my ear. Then, everything went black.
just kidding. Get up, it's a joke. At least, that's what I would say if I was eating a lunchly, which nationwide has been getting recalled for having mold in their cheese. I guess there's a reason why other companies don't use real unprocessed cheese in products that need to have a long shelf life. If you enjoyed the video, I humbly request that you like, subscribe, and leave a comment in that order. It helps more than you know, and supports me in making more awesome videos like these. Now do me a favor, and have a wonderful day.